Hello everyone, hope you're doing good today. So in our last Fedora example, we went through, we changed our workspace theme, we changed our colors, we changed our icons, and we looked at application style, which I'm actually gonna change back to Breeze because Fusion's kind of bugging me. Uh, I think with the night glass theme that I've been using, uh, Breeze just doesn't look as good. Fusion used to be one of my favorites, but I think it's all connected to that color scheme right there. So it's amazing what a color scheme will do for your entire system to just kind of change the way you see it. Um, we're going to go through a few more system setting options. So we got desktop behavior. So under desktop behavior, you got screen locking. And under screen locking, you can tell how long you want it to lock. I have it set for 99 minutes because whenever I want to watch a movie or something, I just don't want it to, don't want to have to hit my mouse every now and then. Uh, wallpaper so this is the wallpaper for your screen lock so if I were to lock my screen right now it has a specific background that it will pick so I want to choose this one because I always want to have my default and it will set my lock screen to my default um, let's see virtual desktops if you know what a virtual desktop is you see two desktops number of rows one apply and it'll automatically create your pager down here that switches you from desktop to desktop. I personally really do not like having that panel there. Um, but there are options. So you got pager and activity pager. One is virtual desktops, one is activities. Uh, cancel. I am going to go ahead and go to my panel settings and remove the pager because the pager drives me nuts. Uh, switching, you can change the way the animation for switching to a desktop queue, fade desktop. So we'll change it to fade desktop, which I think it switches too fast to really see anything. And then uh, let's see, uh, switching desktop. So <sighs> one desktop to the left. Now I don't really like the way that it's set up by default. Let's see. So if I want to switch one desktop to the left, I go ahead and change it to Control Alternate Left. And then if I want to switch one desktop to the right, uh, Control Alt Right. And that's my preferred desktop switcher. So left, right, left, right, left, right. And you see it kind of has a little bit of a fade in there. Um, Let's see. Desktops, that's it for that. Uh, Windows management doesn't really have anything. Uh, shortcuts, if you like setting up shortcuts. Startup and shutdown. So I have Yakuake and K Super Key that I have automatically run. Uh, K Super Key is my command key down here. Some people call it the Windows key. If you have a laptop or a computer that originally had Windows on it, which some people, pretty much most people do, unless you went to System76 or through some other. Um, it tells it to use that key to open up your menu, which I prefer. And one of my other tutorials showed you how to find K Super Key. And then Yakuake, which is your drop-down terminal. And yes, I'm probably butchering the name of that, but you know that's a really hard name to say. Background services, if you don't ever use Bluetooth, you can shut your Bluetooth off. I will say though, be careful because there are some things in here that you do not want to turn off. Um, here it gives you a description. If you don't know what any of this stuff is, just don't mess with it. Uh, apply my Bluetooth being pulled off. Let's see, uh, desktop session. Um, I pretty much leave this as a standard, but I prefer to start with an empty session. If you have it restore previous session, if you shut down and you have three apps open, then when your computer restarts, it's supposed to open up those three apps. Let's see, login screen. It's got a couple of different login screens that you can use, which honestly, they look the exact same, so they're probably not that different. Um, you can choose your background. so. Load from file, uh, let's see, pictures, Fedora, and apply, and 
password. And then anytime I log in, it should be using my background. Advanced um, cursor theme. So when you're logged on, if I want my traditional, which I do, I can select the one I currently use. Um, I really wouldn't mess with any of the rest. If you like auto login, you can auto log in. If you click auto login, you pick your user, you pick which session. So Plasma or Kodi, because I have the Kodi multimedia player installed. Um, if you had GNOME installed, you can switch to GNOME. If you had Cinnamon to Cinnamon, um, but I don't like auto login, so I'm gonna leave that how it is. Let's see. And search. Um, if you want to change some of your search options, account details, um, regional settings, notifications, star applications. So favorite applications. So use KML, or if you install Thunderbird, you can click on that, change it to Thunderbird. File manager automatically have Dolphin, Conquer, Gwynview, or other if you want to add one. Terminal emulator console is your base one. Uh, you could install whatever you want for a terminal web browser so I'll click in the following browser because for some reason it doesn't have my Chrome set up right so if I go in here I'm gonna click on internet and I'm gonna look for Google Chrome and now Google Chrome is set to my favorite web browser file associations if you ever need to edit your file association so what is going to look at a bitmap first? So Gwynview will open up with what the picture looks like, or you can set it to GIMP to open up your bitmaps, or Ocular or Color Paint because that's what's installed on my system right now. So for example, I sh maybe I don't have it. Uh, video. If you were trying to play an MP4 it'll automatically try and play with Dragon Player first, then VLC, then Handbrake. So if you prefer VLC, you can click on every single one of these and change it to VLC player if you would like. Or move VLC player up. See locations, here's personal files, so your path to your desktop. Uh, let's see. Online accounts this is where you go and set up your Google account, your live account, uh, all your accounts. See network settings if you have networks or Bluetooth you want to edit. Input devices this is where you edit your mouse. So I always use a Wi Fi mouse on my laptop because mostly because my membrane mouse is broken. But you can go to your touchpad and enable disable. You can say disable when typing is automatically always there but that doesn't always work very well um, disable touchpad when a mouse is plugged in and I always configure the shortcut key some sometimes I'll forget my mouse in the other room and I don't want to have to walk all the way into the other room to get it so I'll set up a shortcut I always do control alt space and hit OK hit apply and you'll see I'll get a notification my touchpad was disabled because I have my mouse plugged in now if I hit control alt space then my touchpad is on and I can use my touchpad. If I hit control alt space again it turns it off. Simple simple. Display and monitor. Here is where you will find some more very very important stuff. Uh, so here's your resolution for your computer. You can drop it down to the lowest, leave it at the highest. Uh, orientation normal 90 degree clockwise upside down 90 degree clockwise I've never really understood why you would have that um, function uh, but you can yeah you can turn your entire screen upside down Let's see advanced settings you can mess with your refresh rate scale your display if you have two you can unify the outputs um, if you had a external monitor hooked up here, you could move it to the right. So that way, if you move your mouse to the right, it would go to the second screen. You could move it to the left, to the top, to the bottom, whichever way you move it. And if you move your mouse that way, it'll go into that second screen. Uh, compositor. So I always change the animation speed down to instant, and I change from accurate to crisp. This will usually kind of speed things up. It, takes away from some of the animations so the animation speed will take it'll make it less time 
the skill method. Uh, it uses a kind of a uh, less intensive, crisp is less intensive than accurate, and I believe smooth is the, the most high-end one that will use more of your graphics card. Uh, rendering back in is set to OpenGL 2.0. You can change it to 3.1 or X Renderer. X Renderer should make your computer move the fastest, but what it'll do is it will completely remove all of your um, special effects. So, like, uh, if you had it minimized a certain way or uh, uh, any of your effects that you have set up, uh, it will completely remove and then you won't have the pretty that you used to. Let's see, tearing prevention, I just leave this automatic. Uh, keep window thumbnails only for showing windows. Uh, and then color correction is experimental. And you can allow applications to block compositing. So I would say like some apps probably are full screen that wouldn't want to use compositing because if you're using a full screen app, it's probably a game and it will slow it down. And look, we got a issue to report. We'll get it later. <clears throat> Multimedia, you have your audio volume, audio and video, power management if you want to change how your computer reacts. I typically will take off the screen dimming bugs me, especially when my computer's plugged in because I might be watching a movie and then five, ten minutes in, all of a sudden it goes dim and I get annoyed. So I always take that off. Color corrections, digital camera, KDE Connect. Now if you're using KDE Connect, you have to actually go into the firewall and allow KDE Connect. So would we'll say you like KDE Connect, you have to open your firewall, go to your firewall, and then it'll connect. It'll ask for your administrator password, put that in, and then you'll go down the list and look for KDE Connect, which apparently I have not set up on this computer. So this tutorial is also helping me out. So you click that you're going to allow KDE to connect, and then we'll just close that. It looks like it kind of messed things up. Let's see, so we'll go ahead and quit. Yep, I think that error that we just had, my uh, title bar went away. So I had a KWIN issue. Um, so I'll restart that here in a little bit. Um, remember, I'm using Fedora 25, which is not currently released. so. Obviously, I might possibly hit <laughs> instability issues as I go. Uh, printers, if you need to mess around with your printers, and most printers that I've used on here are automatically detecting and I haven't had issues with. Uh, removable storage, if you connect your USB drive to it, uh, removable storage. System D, which you pretty much will never mess with unless you're more of an advanced user and software management. Now software management for Fedora 25 I think it's actually part of KDE 5.8 and it might be part of Fedora. I, I haven't used Neon in a while so I don't remember if it was in Neon but Fedora 25 it has software management right here. If you click on it then you can search for packages you can look for these groups of packages and we'll just say games and apparently I have a bug. It also could still be related to the fact that my system kind of crapped out on me on that last error. So I will probably have this be the end of this lesson. Thank you guys. Stay tuned for more.